Hi everybody, I hope you're having a great day and enjoying this beautiful sunny weather. So today we're continuing our unit on nonfiction. Now the story we're reading today looks a little bit different than some of the other books we've read. I told you that in a nonfiction book, usually the, they're photographs instead of drawings. But sometimes you can get a story that has illustrations like this, but they're realistic illustrations. You can look at this picture and you can tell that that's what a baby turtle would actually look like. He's not having an ice cream cone, he's not riding a bike, he's in a nest with his eggs. So the name of our story today is called One Tiny Turtle and it's written by Nicola Davies, she's the author, and Jane Chapman is the illustrator. Now Jane Chapman, we've seen her work before. She did all the pictures for all the Bear Snores On and Bear Wants More books that we've read in our school. So as I read this today, I want you to think about some of the facts that you're learning about turtles. One tiny turtle. It starts with a little bit of information about turtles. See if you could read it as I read it. About turtles. Sea turtles are related to tortoises and terrapins. They are all reptiles. Sea turtles are great wanderers, traveling thousands of miles each year, often far from land. This makes them difficult to study, so scientists are only just beginning to find out about their mysterious lives. There are seven species of sea turtles. This book is about the loggerhead turtle. Loggerheads live in seas all over the world. So here is the title page, One Tiny Turtle by Nicola Davies, illustrated by Jane Chapman. And I love the pictures in this story. Far, far out to sea, Land is only a memory, an empty sky touches the water. And look how they made the water glisten, that's what it looks like. Just beneath the surface is a tangle of weed and driftwood where tiny creatures cling. This is the nursery of a sea turtle. A nursery is where a baby would sleep. So what they're saying is the seaweed and the driftwood is kind of making a spot for the baby turtles to live and to grow. And there he is. Passing in a boat, you might not notice Turtle, not much bigger than a bottle top. She hides in the green shadows. She's a baby, so her shell is soft as old leather. Just a little fish bite could rip it open. But the turtle is safe in her world of weed and snaps her beak on tiny crabs and shrimp. And here is a fact. Turtles have shells that cover their backs and shells that cover their stomachs. The shells are made from bony plates that get bigger and harder as the turtle grows. That's a fact. And there you can see her. So they like to live in seaweed that floats. And you can see right there, it's a little crab that she can eat. Now she's safe there, you can't see her. The sea turtle swims around flapping her long front flippers like wings. She is flying underwater. Now you know she's not really flying, but she's acting like she is. She pokes her pinprick nostrils through the silver surface to take a quick breath so fast, blink, and you'd miss it. A turtle can't stay up at the top of the water for very long or she could get eaten by a bird. Then she's gone, diving down into her secret life again. Here's another fact. Fish breathe underwater, but turtles are reptiles and need to come up to the surface for air. They do this every four to five minutes when they are active. When they're asleep, listen to this, they can stay underwater for hours. So a turtle needs air. If they can't swim underwater without air, they need to come up. For three or four years, or maybe more, the turtle rides out the storms. You can see there she is. And floats through hot calms. Steadily, she outgrows her nursery. She's getting bigger. Nobody sees her leave, but when you look for her, she has vanished all the same. A year or two later, she turns up close to land, bigger than a dinner plate now. She's not a fish snack anymore. Her shell is hard as armor. Her head is as tough as a helmet. She's grown into her name, Loggerhead. And look at how big she is. Now she's eating real crabs. She has come to eat crabs. Millions swim up from the deep water to breed in the shallows. Their shells crack as easily as hen's eggs in her heavy jaws. 
But in a week, the feast is over and the logger had disappears again. So that, they call the, her mouth, in this part of her mouth, a beak, kind of like a bird, but it's very, very strong. So she can crack right through the crab shells. Loggerheads wander, want, loggerhead wanders far and wide in search of food. In the summer, to cool seaweed jungles where she finds juicy clams and shoals of shrimp. In the winter, to turquoise lagoons warm as a bath where she can munch among the corals. Loggerheads may travel thousands of miles, and she leaves no trace for you to track or follow. Only good luck will catch you a glimpse of her. For 30 years, you might not find her. Then one summer night, she arrives on the beach where she was born. So think of that. 30 years later, from the time when she was born, she goes back to the same beach. She's found her way here, sensing north and south like a compass needle, feeling the current and the warmth of the waves. She remembers the taste of the water here and the sound of the surf. There she is. Loggerhead has grown in her wandering years. She's big as a barrel now. Floating in the sea, she weighs nothing, but on land, she's heavier than a man. So every flipper's step is a struggle. Her eyes stream with salty tears, which helps keep them free of sand. She's not in pain, it just keeps the sand out of her eyes. She's coming ashore at night, where it's less dangerous, she needs to lay her eggs. She only makes the nest at night in cool weather, and then she gets back to the sea as fast as possible. So look what she did. Loggerhead makes her nest where the sea won't reach. Scooping carefully with her hind flippers, those are her back flippers, she makes a deep, steep hole. Inside, she lays her eggs like a hundred squiggly ping pong balls. Afterward, she covers them with sand to hide her nest from hungry mouths. Turtles and turtle eggs have lots of predators. There's birds and animals on the beach, and unfortunately, people who might touch them. So she finds a spot far away from the water, lays them, and covers them with sand. Then the loggerhead is gone again, back to her secret life. This is the trail they leave behind when they go to the ocean. That's all that's left are her prints. Left behind under the sand, her eggs stay deep and safe. Baby turtles grow inside. Females stay close to their nesting beach for several months. In that time, they usually make at least four nests and sometimes as many as 10. And before the summer's over, they wiggle from their shells. Turtle eggs in warm sand can be ready to hatch in six weeks. If the sand is cool, they can take three weeks longer. So if it's nice and warm, these baby turtles will hatch out pretty quickly in about six weeks. And look at how little they are. And this next part's a little bit sad. Above them on the beach, a hundred eyes watch on the lookout for a meal. So the hatchlings wait until night. A baby turtle is called a hatchling. Now, it's sad, but birds and other animals, unfortunately, will eat some of them. Then they burst through the sand and skitter toward the sea. In the dark, claws and beaks and grabbing paws miss only one young turtle. One day she'll remember this beach and come back. But now she dives under the waves and swims and swims out into the arms of the ocean, far, far out to sea. Land becomes a memory waiting to wake in the head of the little turtle. And you could see, unfortunately, those birds got all the other little turtles, but only one made it. Now this one will be important because she could grow to be an adult loggerhead. And there she is. Now friends, there's the index. Everybody better remember what an index is. It tells you, do you wanna learn about the beaches they're on? Go to page 18, 19, 24, and 28. If you wanna learn about the eggs, you go to these pages. If you wanna learn about a turtle nursery, go to page seven and 13. There's also a little bit about the author and the illustrator. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this story about one tiny little turtle. Now, after we've done, after you finish the book, what I'd love for you to do is tell a grown up or a brother or sister what you learned about the turtle. All right, friends, so I hope you enjoyed this story about the turtle, and I hope you told a grown up or a brother or sister about what you learned. Now, for today's assignment, this is what I would love for you to do I made a list dolphin, sea turtle, seahorse, 
otter, orca, great white, lobster, crab, octopus. What I'd love for you to do is pick five of these animals, any one of those five, ones that you haven't learned about before. See if you can look up them on your computer, have mom or dad or grandma or big brother or sister help you, and I'd love for you to write me just a couple sentences about five different animals on here. If you read, you might find out something interesting, like the seahorse. Did you know that the dad carries the babies around in his pouch? For an otter, you might learn that a mom otter uses a piece of seaweed to tie her baby onto her so he doesn't float away in the night. So again, pick five of these animals if you can and look up a fact or two about those five animals. You could write those facts next to them and draw a picture. All right, friends, work hard. Make sure you send a picture to Mrs. Frere, Mrs. Bowman, or to me. Have a great day. Bye-bye.